An aux end is a type of output used on most live sound and recording mixers. They are used to send a portion of an audio signal to alternate destinations independent of the main mix output. There are multiple uses for aux ends. Sending signals to effects processors such as reverbs and delays, to create a monitor mix for performing musicians, or a cue mix to musicians wearing headphones in the studio during recording. Each channel has individual knobs for sending signal into the various aux send buses. Aux 1 and 2 are the green knobs. Aux 3 and 4 are the yellow knobs. Aux 3 and 4 can become aux 5 and 6 by hitting the shift button. This allows for any channels that are not using aux ends 3 and 4 to be alternately sent to aux 5 and 6 instead. The pre-post button allows us to send signal from aux 1 and 2 before or after it passes through the channel fader. In the preposition, Signal will be sent to the aux bus before passing through the channel fader, and the fader will not affect the amount of signal being sent to the aux bus. This is typically used for headphone sends, so musicians would not hear level changes being made to the channel fader by the engineer while setting recording levels. In post fader position, adjusting the channel fader would alter the amount of levels sent into the aux bus. Only aux 1 and 2 on this mixer have this pre post option. Let's turn up aux 1 and 2 on the snare drum. At the moment, we are in post fader mode, so any fader changes will affect the level of signal being sent to the aux bus. Once signal is sent from the individual aux ends, it then passes through the aux masters. If we turn the aux masters up and hit play, you will see that signal is being sent to the aux masters 1 and 2. Now we want to feed the outputs of aux 1 and 2 into an effects processor. Let's connect aux sends 1 and 2, labeled effects sends 1 and 2, to the S verb inputs. We connect aux 1 into the S verb left and aux 2 into the S verb right. We then connect the outputs of the reverb to the aux returns. I will take the left and right outputs of the reverb and connect to the aux 1 returns left and right labeled FX returns. The aux returns bring the output of the reverb into the master section of the mixer and will allow us to control how much of the signal we want to hear. If I turn up the aux1 return master, it will let the reverb into the mixer to be heard. Now that everything is connected, let's go to the reverb to make some adjustments. We want to turn on the processor and if I hit play, we will see what we will have going on. We can hear that we have reverb. We are able to control the size and decay of the reverb and make adjustments to the input and output of the processor. Sometimes it is hard to hear how much reverb is actually present, so hitting the stop button allows you to hear the tail of the reverb by itself. We are currently in post fader, so if I was to lower the channel fader on the snare, the reverb would lower as well. You can tell the channel fader amount controls the signal level to the aux master. If I click pre-fader, you will see that as I turn the channel fader down, it will have no change to the level being sent to the aux masters. What we are hearing now is just the return of the reverb with no dry signal from the channel at all. That gives you additional control over the dry to wet signal and allows for headphone level to musicians to not change while fader adjustments are made to set recording levels to tape. Different mixers have a different number of aux ends, but they all work the same way. The thing to remember about aux ends is that only a part of the signal is being sent to the bus, as opposed to inserts, which process the entire signal used for dynamic and spectral processing.